Yeah. So we will continue. We were working on this uh, problem with RLC circuit. And um, those are the parameters and we already got some representation for this. The first part was to determine the range for the resistor R that would um, lead to oscillation. So we found that range to be uh, between one and infinite. If that the resistor fall in that range, then we will have oscillation. And we work on that and we got we got um, this representation. So we obtained the, the representation, the state space uh, model here. This is matrix A. Then we determine the uh, the eigenvalues of the matrix A. All the parameters are known here except the resistor, and we got to this equation and to get the eigenvalues and this quadratic equation needs to be equal to zero. So we get the general solution for lambdas, which are this one. Then to have oscillation, what we want is that the term here, here inside the square root need to be negative. So we force that and if this is negative, then the system will oscillate. And for this to be negative, um, the smallest number we can have for R is going to be one. So if R is larger, then this will be negative. So that's the range for the resistor. And then the second part of the problem is to get the solution when the resistor is two times the minimum value, which is one ohm. So we got that, and that's the result we, we have from plus plus. So we basically replace the value of R here and we get the matrix and we replace the value of R in our solution for the eigenvalues. This is what we got. And then we pick one eigenvalue with the positive sign here. And we work on obtaining the eigenvector related to that eigenvalue lambda one. So that's the equation we got. And from here, if we multiply here the terms in the first row here, we get this equation. And the second row, we get this equation. So everything is fine until here. But uh, I said, because these, these equations are uh, linearly dependent, we take just one. And we get the real imaginary part of this equation. And we get two equations that we can use to determine the eigenvector. Uh, the eigenvector, because the eigenvalue is complex, the eigenvector will be complex. But for the eigenvector, because you have two terms, then you need to specify four parameters. So with two equations, you can only, uh, you will need to assume uh, the values of two of these parameters and the other two are going to be determined by this relationship we will find. So when you get the real part of this, uh, when you get the real part of this, here's the, the, the mistake that I made um, because before here we have, um, if we get the, the, the real part, I forgot to put the square root of three here. So we need to make that correction. And with that in mind, then the other, another mistake that I made here is that A will be negative C, negative B. And here I put it with positive sign. So with those two correction, the last equation is the imaginary terms of this equation, which are here. So we can isolate for B and we get this expression. So with this expression for A and B, we can determine the Eigen, uh, eigenvector. So we will do that here and see what solution we can obtain. And we'll put that here. Lambda one is negative one plus j square root of three. 
So we pick a value for C and we pick a value for D. Um, so we can pick C equal one, D equals zero, and then A will be negative C, negative square root of three D. As D is zero, C is one, so A is minus one. And B will be the square root of three C minus D. With C one and D zero, then D is square root of three. Therefore, the eigen vector for lambda one will be uh, will be a plus j b, so it's negative one plus j is square root of three. And for the second term will be c plus j b, so we just have one. sharing and we have that in the screen perfect so this is a situation now so this is the eigenvalue and this is the eigenvector we get for this problem so as the eigenvalue lambda 2 is equal to the conjugate of lambda 1 then Q2 will be the conjugate of Q1. So if we obtain the matrix Q here, the first term, let's put it in this fashion, Q1 and Q2, that is going to be negative one plus J, the square root of three and one, and Q2 will be the conjugate. What we need to use here in a few more steps, uh, we will take soon. Um, we need to get the inverse. So the inverse of Q, what is going to be the inverse? It's going to be one over the determinant of the matrix Q. And the determinant is obtained by the product of these two diagonal terms minus the product of a of diagonal term. In this case, we have negative one plus j square root of three minus the product of these two. So you get plus one plus j square root of three. That's one over the determinant. So this part here is going to be the determinant of Q. And here we put the transpose of the matrix of the cofactor of Q, but in this case is simple. Basically, we change the diagonal terms and we keep this one as we change the sign. As you can see here, number one get cancelled, and then <clears throat> and then here uh, Q inverse will be one over J two times the square root of three multiplied by this matrix. Uh, what we need to do now, we need to, we're going to use to get the, the transformation. Um, so we need to get the variable y. And
Yeah. So uh, what we need to do here, we need to get the initial condition. Well, the transformation is, let's not forget, x is, is going to be equal to q1. This is the vector of the original state variable. These are the new state variables. And as q is a, a full rank invertible, then we can get this relationship. Then what we need here is to get the initial condition for y. So the initial condition for y will be q inverse x zero. So Q inverse is a matrix we just obtained for the capacitor and negative one for the inductor. So if we do this product here, we get two times minus this part. So we will get one and here we have negative two plus one, so you get negative uh, one and negative j square root of two. Is this correct? Okay. <clears throat> now the solution for The solution for the state variable now uh, is going to be uh, given by this new matrix. So basically, because this is a diagonal matrix, we, we, can, we can write down all the terms here to make it very clear. This is diagonal. In the diagonal term, we will have the eigenvalues so because the matrix is diagonal, this equation is decoupled. So the variable y1 will be determined just by solving this simple equation uh, with an initial condition for y1 uh, given by this term. So we have this over j to the square root of three. And the second equation will be y2, lambda two, y2, with an initial condition given by this term. So if we solve this, uh, we know that the solution for y1 then it's going to be y1 uh, zero multiplied by the exponential of lambda one t. So we replace the terms and then we have an expression for um, for for the equation. This can be simplified a little bit, right? Um, what can we do here? 1 over j is negative j. Do you agree with me? So we can do that. And then we will have here uh, one term is going to be real if we multiply this with the imaginary term 
So you will have negative J squared, that is uh, plus one. So basically that term is going to be one over two because the square root of three get canceled, one over two. And the other term uh, will be um, negative J, one over two the square root of Here on this part, we will get something similar. This is going to be um, the same term, one over two, but this will be different with uh, plus J one over two. So the, the initial condition becomes that term. So with that, uh, we can replace the value here for the solution for y1, which is going to be one over two minus j one over two square root of three multiplied by the exponential of lambda one t. At lambda one t, let me put it here, lambda one is the negative one plus j square root of three lambda two is negative one plus j square root of three. The mode for lambda one, exponential of lambda one t will be exponential of negative one plus j square root of three all multiplied by t. So we can, we can separate the terms here. We remember that the exponential of a plus b equal to the exponential of a multiplied by the exponential of b. So if we apply that here, then we get exponential of negative t, there's a real part. And then here we have the exponential of j times the square root of three t. For the second mode, we will get something Oh, second mode is negative sign here. For the second mode, we get something similar, the same exponential decay, but uh, for the second exponential, we have negative j square root of three t. So if we replace that here, uh, we have exponential of negative t and exponential of j square root of three t. For y2, then we have something similar, but here we use the second IM value and we replace the term one over two plus J one over two square root of three multiplied by the second mode, exponential of negative T, exponential of negative J square root of three T. So that's how we get the solution for lambda one and lambda two. So what is uh, next? And we have the solution for or lambda uh, y1 and y2, what we're going to do now is to get the transformation qy, because that will give us the original state variable x1 and x2. So the final step here is going to be x1 and x2, going to be equal to the matrix Q multiplied by the vector Y1 and Y2. So we do that. So here's Q negative one plus J square root of three, one negative one negative J square root of three, uh, one. And this is going to be multiplied by the expression we got for the 
y. Uh, let me just put it here, y1 and y2. So basically, I will put the whole equation here. We will have this term multiplied by y1, which is over there. Okay. And exponential of t and exponential of j square root of 3t, the first term. And then the second term will be multiplied by y2. We just obtained that term. So that's the full solution for, for the variable x1. For x2, we get x2 from the second equation, which is basically y1 plus y2. So we replace those values here. But intentionally, I left the exponential decay uh, out because we're going to factorize by that term. That will be present in the solution. So this is the final solution. As we discussed before, these correspond to a real system. X1 is the voltage in the capacitor, and X2 is the current in the inductor. So these need to be real quantities. So if we haven't made any mistake, if you develop this equation, all the imaginary terms will be canceled. If not, we made a mistake somewhere. Yeah. So we can verify that, and it's very easy to verify that in the last equation, and we will do that. Um, so what can we do here? Uh, one thing we have to do is to use a Euler identity for this term, which is exponential of j, the square root of 3t, is going to be nothing else than cosine of the square root of 3t plus j sine of square root of 3t. For the other case, because here you have negative j, you will have something similar, but the, the second term will be negative j sine of square root of 3t. So for, for the sake of time, uh, we're going to just work on the second variable, and the first variable is going to be left as an exercise. Uh, it's going to be a little bit more complicated because here you need to uh, deal with this complex term that you need to multiply as well. Um, the equation here will be simple, but it's the same procedure. Um, so we're going to work on this part. So with the Euler identity, you have convert the exponential uh, term into rectangular form. So you have a real part plus j second term, which is the imaginary part. So here you have two complex quantity in rectangular form. So we need to multiply this. From here, you will have four terms. And from here, you will have other four terms. The only difference in the in the mode here, as you can see here, the cosine term is exactly the same. But the 
imaginary term are one is positive and the other is negative. So we will expect this term to be canceled somehow. But we will see that. on the second state variable. X2 of T then will be the term we will get here. Uh, I will write it again here so I don't make any mistake. And then Is that what we have? And everything is going to be multiplied by the exponential decay. Yeah, I think we're good there. Um, <clears throat> so we, we can deal with this. Uh, we will have a real part here. So here we have uh, one over two, and we can do something else here to make it simple. We can factorize by one over two. There. We can factorize by one over two, one over two. So here we will have cosine of square root of 3t, and then we have this term, which is negative j squared, and that is going to be positive, is 1 over square root of 3 sine of square root of 3t. Yeah, those are the two real terms. We have two imaginary terms, the product of these two and the product of these two. So one of them is going to be negative j, 1 over square root of 3 cosine of square root of 3t. But if you look here, that term is canceled. It's here. Exactly the same term. So that will be canceled with that one. And here you have plus j sine of the square root of 3t. But here you have negative of that term. So that will be canceled. So the only two terms that are not canceled are the real one. So here we need to get the, the real term. So one is going to be cosine of that. So that is going to be two times. And the other term will be this one, which is going to be plus one over square root of three sine of this, which is the one here. And this is multiplied by the exponential decay and one over two, but that two get canceled by that. So uh, we are getting close to the solution. Uh, we don't like sometimes this cosine and sine, it's not clear. It's better to combine it in just one term. And to do that, what we can do we can propose something here. Uh, so, for example, we can propose that the solution we're looking for is um, cosine of 
some angle. Let's call it theta. Multiply by cosine of the square root of 3t. What is cosine of theta? What do you have there? It's a one. So basically, we're saying that this cosine of theta needs to be equal to one. And then on this side, you will have um, a plus sine of theta divided by sine of square root of three. Uh, and all of these will be multiplied by the exponential decay. So what is sine of theta? Sine of theta is going to be one over the square root of three. Uh, uh, because these terms, um, we don't know the, 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 the magnitude you might have here, so we're missing the term h here on both sides. So let me explain what it is. So basically, what we're doing here, we're assuming here we have a component here that is h time cosine of theta. And then we're assuming here we have another term here that is 90 degrees uh, from the first one that is h time sine of theta. So if we take these two uh, to the square and we sum them, we will get this part that has a length of h and the angle here will be theta, yeah? So the question is how much is h and how much is theta? So how much is h? Can we determine that? We can, we just propose these equations. This marker, are not good. H cosine of theta is equal to one. H sine of theta is equal to one over square root of three. So if we take these two to the square and we sum them, then we have an expression for h squared, right? So here, h squared will be one squared plus this term squared. Um, so this is going to be four third. And therefore, h is going to be two over square root of three. Yeah, is that correct? So what we have here then, cosine of theta is one over h square root of three over two. And here you have sine of theta is one over square root of three h, that is one over two. You can get the tangent sine of theta divided by cosine of theta, get the number, and you get the arc tangent and you get the angle theta. But by inspection, we know how much is this? 60. So theta is going to be 60 degrees, and that is how much? Uh, in radians per second? In radians, I'm sorry. Um, four? Four? Six times three is 180, right? Okay, uh, so with that, finally, we find that the solution for this is going to be, uh, we can factorize by H, which is this term here. And then you have an exponential VK right there. And here you have all of that multiplied by cosine of theta, cosine of square root of three t plus sine of theta, sine of the square root of three t. And by uh, trigonometric identity, that corresponds to cosine of 
square root of 3t minus theta. So we finally found the solution for x2. What we verified with this, we're verifying that the solution is a real quantity. So as an exercise, I am going to ask you that you work with the variable x1 and see if you can get a nice compact representation like this. Yeah. So now, um, Uh, what we're going to do, how much time do we have? Like 12 minutes. So we're going to solve it in MATLAB. Can we do it? Yes, it will be very easy. So you, 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 you need to use MATLAB to find uh, the solution of the problem that you were work on. So this is going to be chapter two, problem 2.5. Um, so the first thing we need is a resistor, which is has a resistance of two, two ohm. L is one Henry, and C is 0 0.255. With that, we have a matrix. Um, can you tell me here, what is the first term of the matrix? I think that was one over RC. Yes. The second term? Negative one over C. Negative one over C. Second row? One. One. one over L. And the last term is zero, right? So that's the matrix. So now we obtain the IM values and IM vectors of A. So how we're going to do that with the command EIG. When you don't know how, how to use that command, you just type help EIG and you will have a full description of how you can use that command. When my computer is ready, there it is. Yeah, we have a full description here. So what we're going to use, we're going to use this second, uh, the use of the command. So we will get the IM values of A, but you will get two matrices. The first one is B, which is the, the matrix of the IM vectors. We have called that matrix Q. And the second matrix is D, in which in the diagonal, you have the IM values. We have called that capital lambda. So we get that and we get the item values. Okay. So we can save this map of code. This is chapter two, problem two five. Okay. And we can get the solution. So Q is that matrix. Does it look similar to what we have? No, right? Uh, our matrix was what? One plus J the square root of three and one. And the other was the, 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 the conjugate of that. So we don't, we, we don't have the same, so we will see whether we get the same result or not. Um, when we have these, what else do we need? We need the initial condition. The initial condition is two volt for the voltage in the capacitor and negative one for the current in the inductor. So the initial condition for Y will be the inverse of Q times X zero. And now what we're going to do, uh, we're going to get the, the solution for Y, but the solution for Y depend on the time variable. So we need to, uh, define that uh, time variable using a vector. We will use discrete time. So that vector is going to be capital T 
And then here we are going to use a uh, uh, line of space and we can check what is line of space right here. How you use line of space? Generate a row of vector of a hundred linearly equally spaced point between x1 and x2. So uh, we can define this one and 10 maybe. Let's see what we get. So we will have a hundred uh, different points between not one, zero, from zero to 10. So zero to 10 seconds. And <clears throat> for each one of them, uh, let's see what we get for T. So T is a row vector, I don't like that. We can use a column vector. There it is. So we have a column vector with different times that we will use to evaluate our function. So what we're going to do here, um, for each time, we will evaluate the solution for y1 and y2. And at the same time, we will obtain what is the equivalent value for x1 and x2. We know what is the solution for x1 uh, y1 and y2. So we will use a transformation to get x1 and x2 at different times. So we will use a for loop from k1 to the, from the first term of t to the last term of t, uh, and we will solve this. So y1 is going to be, uh, as we obtained so far is y0, the first term of y0 is going to be the initial condition for y1 multiplied by the exponential of lambda, which is the first lambda uh, we have in the matrix, the first term in the matrix lambda. We have lambda here, and as you can see, is a diagonal matrix, yeah? So this is the first column. The first term is the eigenvalue. Second term is zero. Second column, first term is zero. Second term is the eigenvalue that conjugates. So we have exponential of lambda t, the time. But the time is going to be t of k because we were using discrete time. Something similar will be for y2. Y2 now will use the second term for the initial condition. And here we will use the second eigenvalue. So easy, that's the solution for y1 and y2. Uh, what we're going to do now, uh, we're going to get, we're going to get the values for x. And I'm going to call this x vector. So x vector is going to be the matrix Q multiplied by the vector y1 and y2. So we have the vector for x1 and x2 at that given time. What is the time? T of k. For that time, we will get x1 and x2 in that vector. And then we will store that value. So this is going to be the first component in that vector is going to be x1. And the second component in that vector is going to be x2. So we close the loop, we have the solution. And then at the end, we can do the plotting. So uh, let's plot it in the, in the same figure. So we have t x1, and let's make it this with blue color. And then you have t x2, and let's make it with red color. Okay. So that's the solution for the system. So we did it uh, by using our knowledge of the transformation. 
we know immediately, no matter what is the system, we know what is the solution for Y1 and Y2. If this system has any state variable, we will know the solution for each one of them. It's easy. And when we get the solution, we take it in matrix form, Q multiplied by the vector of Y, and then you get the state variable, the original state variable of the system. That's what we did, and we plotted that the solution. Now with this, you are able to solve the dynamic response of any linear system, no matter how large it is, this is what we do. We use the transformation, okay? Uh, something we can do, we can verify whether this is a solution or not. Uh, let's see if we, we got it right, or maybe we made a mistake. So let, let, let's see what we, we got. So I'm going to put here the analytical, analytical solution. And this is going to be in uh, calculated. And this is X2 calculated. And this is going to be this expression uh, right here. So we can just put the whole expression here. And as this is a vector, MATLAB will calculate this as a vector, but we need to be careful with the multiplication. So this is going to be a term by term multiplication of terms. So instead of using that multiplication, we would use that multiplication symbol. So that will make a term by term, by term multiplication. So if we apply that, then we have two over square root of three multiplied by the exponential decay, which is negative t, exponential of negative t. And that is multiplied term by term uh, by that cosine over there. It's cosine of square root of three, bigger, right? Three. Yeah. T. And minus theta, that we said that is pi or three. That's supposed to be the solution. It seems we got the solution. Yes, we have something there. We need to verify that. Um, so we will, in this plot here, we're going to use the command hold on to keep the, the, the plotting we have so they don't get lost, and we will plot this again. So we will plot t and x2 calculated, and we will we will make it with black color. Let's see what we get. So before before we got this right, and the variable x2 is the one in red. So let's see what we get now. Got it. We have a tiny issue, a big issue. So this is not the right solution. What, what, what is the problem here? We made some error somewhere. Huh? Can you tell us that the equation over there plus a little 3t plus um, sine kd? Yeah. Do you have any expand that? Uh, I don't remember, did you have any identity for that or any equation for that? This one right here? Yes. This one is one over square root of three. No, when we expand that. So about, when we expand the above equation. Yes. The, this one yes. from here to yes. here. Yes. Yeah. Uh, we are assuming, proposing that this coefficient here is h sine of theta. Okay. That's what we're assuming. One over square root of three is this term. And this one, one is equal to this right there. Yeah. 
I would say maybe just plot the uh, the original one you got before you do the H simplification and see what you see if the mistake is. Yeah. So we have, uh, all, we're almost there in our calculation. So what we're going to do, we're going to have this and double check all the calculation we made and we should have the same result. Okay, so we will pick it up from here. What I'm going to do also, I'm going to put in Canvas the solution for this. I already did it in my office before, like a week ago, without any mistakes. So here in the whiteboard, sometimes it's hard for me because I, I get too close to the whiteboard and I made mistakes. I don't see the numbers well, but I will put that PDF Let's check, find what was the mistake here, make the correction, and see if we get the same plot that we got here in red. Yeah. All right, thank you guys. Oh, or one of these? Okay, okay. Yeah, we will check that. So next class, we will review that uh, solution. And please check the PDF that I'm going to put in Canvas. Thank you, guys.